Hi, let's look at Vertex AI now. Vertex AI brings AutoML and AI platform together into a unified API, client library, and user interface. AutoML allows you to train models on image, tabular, text, and video data sets without writing code. So you have predefined models uh, exposed as a service that you can use. While AI platform lets you run custom training code. So you can write your uh, custom machine learning model. And Vertex AI combines these two capabilities under one umbrella. Now, what does it take to build an ML-enabled system? So building an ML-enabled system is a multifaceted undertaking that combines data engineering, machine learning engineering, and application engineering. Data engineering involves ingesting, integrating, curating, and refining data to facilitate a broad spectrum of operational tasks, data analytics tasks, and machine learning tasks. ML models are built and deployed in production using the curated data that is usually created by the data engineering team. The models do not operate in silos. They are components of uh, and, and support a large range of application systems, such as BI systems, line of business applications, process control systems, and embedded systems. What it means is that ML model uh, is nothing without its actual application use cases. Integrating an ML model into an application is a critical task that involves making sure first that the deployed model is used effectively by the application and then monitoring model performance. So once the model is deployed, it's very important to have those KPIs defined to monitor the model uh, according to business expectations and continuously improve upon the model. Now, this, this whole process consists of uh, following, uh, typically, the, most of the time, it uh, follows a process where first you do machine learning development, uh, which is about experimenting and developing a robust and, and reproducible model training uh, procedure. A lot of times it's called training pipeline co code, which consists of multiple tasks from data preparation and transformation to model training and evaluation. So as an output of machine learning development, you have code uh, in terms of your machine learning model and the configuration that, uh, that is required for that. Then you look at uh, training operationalization, which is about automating the process of packaging, testing, and deploying repeatable and reliable training pipelines. Then the training pipeline becomes a feed to continuous training, which is about repeatedly executing the training pipeline in response to new data or to code changes or on a schedule potentially with new training uh, settings because it's uh, it, uh, machine learning models are always learning systems. So you always need to uh, keep augmenting with it uh, with new set of data because more and more data uh, your machine learning becomes more and more mature uh, model becomes more and more mature then comes when your model uh, is mature and basically predicting uh, 
uh, within the expected realm of uh, output uh, uh, you are expecting for the business, you deploy that model. So model deployment, which is about concerning packaging, testing, and deploying to the serving environment for online experimentation and production serving. Then that package is a feed to predictive serving, which is about serving the model that is deployed in production for inference. Then that gives you logs, uh, which is which is used by continuous monitoring tools or con continuous monitoring capability to effectively uh, validate the deployed model. Now, as part of uh, 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 all of this process, data and 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 the model management. So. The two, two most important aspect of this is the model that you have created and the data that is required and the kind of data that it works on. So data and model management is a central uh, cross-cutting function for governing machine learning arti uh, artifacts. And uh, it's very important to manage the, the model and, and as well as the data that is required for it. Now, there's a lot of times uh, the terms like MLOps is used. Uh, it's very similar to DevOps, uh, but machine learning operations, it's end-to-end -end workflow because industry has struggled in terms of, uh, mainly during the initial period that, you know, the data scientists could build the model, but how that model will actually make it into production and uh, how it will be continuously monitored, how uh, it will continuously have a loopback process to give the feedback depending upon the new data sets that arrive. So this has always been a challenge. So MLOps has emerged as a process to, to do end-to-end -end workflow for machine learning models. So let's look at it, uh, uh, important aspects of MLOps. So as part of continuous training, uh, it, it, it's, an, it's a very iterative process and uh, it's all about orchestrating and automating the execution of training pipelines. Typically, the machine learning pipelines uh, have the, uh, these uh, following components, data ingestion, which is it's, it's, it's all about how the tra training data is extracted from the source data sets. Data validation, which is the extracted training data is validated to make sure that model is not trained using squid or corrupted data. Because if the data is, is wrong, uh, you will have biased or uh, not uh, relevant uh, predictions. Data, trans, uh, data transformation, which is about the data is, is, is split typically into training, evaluation, and testing the splits. If you come from machine learning background, you would understand the x-axis and the y-axis and how you have to split the data into sample data sets and uh, the, the expected, depending upon the model that you are using. So that data transformation plays a very important role. And also a lot of uh, machine learning models don't work with certain data types. They don't, uh, they, they need data in a certain format. A lot of time by, times you need to compact multiple columns into one column. So all of these are done as part of data transformation. Then you do model training and tuning. Model training and tuning uh, is is uh, is uh, basically training the model with the data set and uh, the concepts like hyperparameters, uh, which are you know in in machine learning way just the influences or the parameters that you use to further tune your uh, 
machine learning models. So to, to take an example, if you are measuring the distance between X and Y axis kind of thing. So it's uh, whatever variables which can reduce the error rate. So th those, those kind of uh, tuning parameters. Then you evaluate the model, which is, is you evaluate it against the test data to, to assess the performance of the model. And you use various evaluation metrics or, or, or different partitions of the data to evaluate the model. Um, in a sense, you have a big data set, you break it into multiple different data sets and, and, and you, you evaluate it through different iterations. Then the model validation. Uh, the result of model evaluation are validated to make sure that the model meets the expected performance criteria. And when all good and done, you register the model. This is a typical machine learning uh, model development process from ingestion all the way to getting it ready. Now, once the model is ready, you store it in a model registry. Along the way, uh, you use data processing engines, model training engines, model evaluation engines. So these are the different in, uh, servers, infrastructure, uh, 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 different engines that you use. So like data processing engine, something like Spark or something you use. Uh, model training engine is depending upon TPU, uh, GPUs or uh, or, or, or in fact, different uh, libraries, different uh, uh, frameworks, or in fact, different tools that you use. Then you have, uh, you make use of a machine learning metadata and artifact repository is, is, is basically where you store your, uh, your code. In, uh, so let's say an example of, of GitHub repo where you store all of the uh, the metadata and artifact repository. Or a lot of times it could be a database as well where you are storing the metadata or the schema definition of, of uh, different data sets. Now, once you have gone through this, building the model, your model is ready. You need to deploy this model. So that's when the next phase comes in. Uh, when it's ready for deployment, during uh, the deployment process, you basically package the model, you test it, and you deploy to the target environment. Uh, this uh, particular you know, section, it's, uh, it, it's typically a CI CD workflow. So in the CI stage, CI stage, which is continuous integration, the source code is unit tested, so this unit tested and the training pipeline is built and integration tested. Any artifacts that are created by the build are stored in an artifact repository. So something like this, the same here. So this is, if it is, if it is a containerized code, you know, you use container registry or, you know, depending upon whatever is the artifact. Now, in the CD stage, which is the continuous deployment or con continuous delivery, the tested training pipeline artifacts are deployed to a target environment. So you, you pick the code from artifact repository and you deploy it into production. Uh, typically, the, these pipelines are tested in non-prod environments or, you know, depending upon if you have different deployment topologies uh, like blue green or something while the full scale training is performed only in production environments so you build it you test it and you deploy it in production the newly deployed training pi uh, pipelines are uh, you know mostly smoke tested now once it's uh, it's deployed to production. Comes the next stage is is the prediction serving process. 
So because you have deployed it, it's going to serve a prediction, which, which is what, uh, you know, is, is the outcome. So the model service starts to accept prediction request or serving data to serve responses with predictions back to the system. Uh, for that, typically what happens is that there's an, um, um, like an endpoint created. So e either you have predictions or you're running the, the deployed model against an online inference or a batch inference. So whether it's uh, basically creating an endpoint and, you know, per record or something, it's coming, it's giving you a pred uh, prediction or you are running a batch of record and uh, you're getting predictions for that. So it, which is online comes with the stre streaming inference, batch comes with embedded inference. Online inference is, is near real time for very high frequency requests, or a lot of times it's mini batches as well. Offlines are always mostly batch. So, uh, and, and, and that's where it's uh, basically the embedded, inter, uh, it's called embedded inference because uh, it's part of the embedded system or a lot of times it's part of, uh, it's, it, it's the edge devices. Now, what comes out of this is, is basically the model consumer is providing the data and he's getting back the predictions. Again, during this whole uh, process, you have logs created, which is used by models monitoring engines, that how your model is doing. And sometimes to serve the model, you have you know some repositories where uh, where you do the lookup. So starting from the left, when you started creating a model, all the way to where the consumer is actually getting the prediction out of that model from the production system. This entire end-to-end -end workflow is called MLOps, machine learning operations. And this is where Vertex AI comes into play. Vertex AI uh, provides you that end-to-end -end platform uh, for AutoML as well as customer uh, or as well as custom training. So AutoML, which is available for image, tabular, text, and video, and then uh, custom training where you build your own model. Now, put it into perspective the same angle of things, if we look at it, this is pretty much all of the activities you do as part of that. Uh, the different ways Google provides you services. Uh, there are some low code ways using SQL to run machine learning models on data, which is part of BigQuery ML. No code is what auto ML. What this no code means is that based on predefined models. So for vision, video, language translation, tables and forecasting, this is industry has known this sort of data and what is expected out of it for a really long period of time. And so the, through the maturity of expected predictions, there are a lot of ML models which are created and they are exposed as a service which you can consume. So that's part of auto ML. Then comes the part where you need to do the grind to build your own model uh, specific to your own business use case, you know, evaluating all of um, uh, different, different kinds of algorithm. This is where Vertex AI uh, plays a really big role. So it provides you capability in terms of the entire MLOps workflow that we just talked about. And it provides you that in the form of a pipeline, an orchestration. So you can orchestrate this entire process through step by step. Now, and each one of these steps are self-contained components. So 
it's it's not like an etl flow where um, but more like a like a you know individually deployed container strung together uh, in a flow so which is very important to understand putting that into how it looks is 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 this is how the vertex ai menu um, or the items look like on gcp console uh, you have pipelines you have Workbenches, data sets, features, training, experiments, model, endpoints, batch predictions, and metadata. So now let's look at uh, Vertex AI on Google Cloud Console and how do these pipelines look like? You access Vertex AI under Artifi Artificial Intelligence section, which is right uh, at the bottom um, below Big Data. So Vertex AI, if you click on this, this is how the screen looks like. And on the left side, you have different options. Uh, the, the first thing that you do as part of Vertex AI is basically you create a workbench, uh, which will, which, uh, you know, where you can create uh, different notebooks and notebooks are the playing gro ground to actually build a, uh, or you know write models so in this case i have created a workbench and you can just click on any one of this uh, within the user management if you click on new notebook it gives you a lot of options uh, and you can pick either one tensorflow or different versions without gpus or some specific machines now when I have it created, if you click on Open Jupyter Lab, this will open up a Jupyter Lab for you. So if I click on it, so this is a Jupyter Lab, and then from the launcher, I get an option to create notebooks or console or other stuff with Python three. And if you are familiar with data, you know, uh, or you know, you come from data science background, you understand these things pretty well. So Python. Now, what I really want to show you is how do these pipelines look like? So beyond the code, and there, there are bits and pieces of coding here, but this is how a pipeline looks like. This is a pipeline where, you know, a classification model is being run on a massive data set. And if the model, uh, if the prediction is not higher than the threshold value, it will not deploy in the production. So this is the kind of end-to-end -end machine learning workflow that, that you need to, that you typically look at. And as described below, uh, each one of these are components and you treat them as containers and each one of them has input as well as output. So if you toggle these expand artifacts, like this particular case, if I click on data set, it will give me URI for the data set where it is created. And if you go to data sets, you can see the data sets that's there. You workbench we already looked at where I have one workbench that I have created and which is basically the infrastructure and the Jupyter lab you click on pipelines pipelines will give you all of the pipelines that you have created and you can access the pipeline from here uh, similarly you have training experiment models if you click on models it will give you all of the models that you have created similarly endpoints and uh, as well as the metadata so if I click on this model this one this is giving me a lineage so for a very complex uh, flow you know you will have the complete lineage of how you know your data is traversing through so again uh, coming back to pipeline clicking on the pipeline and looking at the pipeline so I hope this uh, made sense vertex AI is upcoming it's been recently announced but uh, it's for the first time 
especially uh, from the Google point of view, uh, it provides you uh, end to end workflow for your entire, you know, ML ops or machine learning lifecycle. So I hope you, it was useful. Thank you.